In a world of 9.18, scumbag artilleries will be nerfed to the ground, light tanks will be actually useful, and the matchmaker won't ass rape you every time you play a low tier vehicle. That is the dream. That is... Wait a minute. Where is the patch notes? <laughs> Where is the specific detailing that I won't be ass raped by artillery or matchmaker or the light tanks will be super OP? I don't see it, so... Ow, my throat. That really hurts. How does Christian Bale do it? Do I look like a cop to you? Where are the drugs going? <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pads. I can go on for days. No, I can't. So welcome back, folks. As you can see, there is no test server patch notes for 9.18. I mean, it does sound good, but where is the specific detailing of all the changes? What if you nerf my B2 artillery, the French tier 5 premium artillery? What if you get the same matchmaking with the Light Panzer M41? So I want all the details, but there is no patch notes, sad to say, at least for the North American server. So I went through all the other ones, and obviously the RU server has it. So here is the translated patch notes from the RU server. So you can go take a look by visiting worldoftanks.ru. But today I want to take a look at generalization of the artillery class after the nerf and the new personal missions for artillery and if you should still do them. So here is artillery in a nutshell for the new patch. As you can see, DPM gets shafted, penetration as well. Same goes for the clip size for the batch artillery by one round and takes four seconds longer between each shell. So that's rough. That's really rough, but faster reload-ish. Yeah, it's all right. So yeah, artilleries will receive a large nerf to their firepower, but it's going to be a little bit more accurate Slightly better dispersion on moving, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so the trade-off is bigger explosion, better aim, time, aim time and accuracy, dispersion, at the cost of penetration, damage, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So is it worth to try these new vehicles? Well, here you can see the penetration range got reduced to about 55 millimeters. So very unlikely that high explosive will pin dealing the full alpha. Alpha reduced by 40 to 50%. Even if high explosive penetrated, it won't one shot the same tier of vehicles. So the only way of you dealing a full kill from full HP is mostly a tier 10 shooting a 210 millimeter at a tier 8 light tank. And that's probably about it because most vehicles have more than 1300 hp at tier 9 and tier 10 so therefore it's not gonna work also reload time got reduced to compensate by only about 10 to 15 percent aim time got reduced by 35 percent accuracy increased by 10 slash 15 eh, small compensations dispersion mood a little bit better from movement so it's not much, but module damage also got reduced by 50%. And that's kind of a lot because some of the personal missions requires you to detrack. And if you don't have high module damage, you won't detrack. So it doesn't make sense, right? But you do have a larger explosion radius, I guess. But then again, you also have the reusable consumable, the repair kit and the uh, large repair kit, which basically repairs your tracks fully to the full health. So detracking, it's pretty hard. Explosion radius increased about 35% to 50%. No more AP, APCR, or high explosive anti-tank shells. So no more automatic pins, I guess. Average stun duration is not listed. So it's a stat, but it varies between the difference the armor values like 100 millimeter versus 300 millimeter on the T95. Yeah, that's a dramatic difference. And the usage of spall liners, which reduce stun as well. So it's a stat, but it's high variance. Same shell cost, 
same velocity, maximum range for the shells, so basically the same art of fire, same health, mobility, and miscellaneous stats for the rest of the vehicle, but less view range, about 15 to 20 ish percent. So you cannot just hide in a bush, wait for somebody to come over and spider hole them, trapdoor spider them, like I showed you. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, Arturis are not supposed to trap or spider people. <laughs> that's what I do, but that's evil. That's scumbaggery to the fullest. So, eh, it's alright. It's fine. So, why should you do the Arturi personal missions? Well, the reward is pretty substantial. I already did all the bean counting about last year around the revamp to the personal missions. So, back then, I already told you, like, the maximum credits slash free XP slash premium days you could get out of the personal missions. And if you did all, like what, 300 missions completely? Because five classes of 60 mission per different sets, like the Stuk 4, the T28, heavy tank concept, the T55, and the object 260. So, different sets, but if you did all of them, it's like, what, 60 million credits or something? I forget, I still have the spreadsheet, but it's a lot of rewards, and it's a stockpile. So I think the personal missions are still worth it, but now let's see if they are easier with the stun mechanics, because originally, artilleries are focused on artillery's damage rather than the potential of killing different targets. So most of the missions are focused on artillery dealing a lot of damage or gaining a lot of XP. And that was the main goal for playing artillery. Now they shifted to area effect, like all stun. And stun is pretty easy because all you have to do is touch somebody with your shell close enough and they'll get stunned for like what, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, who know. But let's see if the personal missions are easier than before. So here is number one. So now it's stun enemy vehicles. Different amount of time. So originally it was score hits. So is it easier? Well, depending on which vehicle. So you could get multi stun if they're all clusterfuck at a choke point. You could multi stun with one shell and that would be it. So could you basically like stun five vehicles with one shell? Would that complete like the first mission for T28 concept? Maybe. But originally it has to be scored direct hits or at least close enough hits to enemy. So I think it's a little bit easier. Same reward. All the rewards are the same. So you get the same stuff, but it's easier to do. So therefore it's a lot easier for you to complete the artillery quests quests, personal missions, for the object 260, or the T-55A, or yada yada yada. So, good enough. Next mission is stun enemy vehicles for X number of seconds. Now, is this accumulative? Which is, if you have more than one vehicle stunned in your radius, does that all add to one, or just count as one? So... It will be crazy if all of them adds together into one, rather than one shell stuns for one, like one setting of your shell. But who knows, but 100 seconds, I mean, if you stun for like 5 seconds, that's 20 rounds. That's a little bit, a lot. <laughs> so I believe everybody just accumulates into one. So if you stun like 5 vehicles with one shell, all the stun numbers are added, or times 5 into one so it should be easier than cause x a number of damage or be the top five on your team of damage dealt but then again if you play high tier artillery if you play vehicles with like 210 millimeters or 240 the t92 obviously you will deal a lot of damage if you hit so it depends on like with Mission number one, if all the values are added together or are they separate for each shell. But should be somewhat easier than dealing a lot of damage. Should be, as long as you hit them. 
and stun them. So, I mean, the blast radius is increased by 50%. That's a lot. So, hmm. third mission is stun a heavy tank or tank destroyer at least two times. And stunning shot should also cause damage. That's pretty easy. Originally, it was deal X number of damage. Now, it's basically just stun them. So, stun an enemy heavy tank or tank destroyer at least 8 times. Does it count accumulatively? Again, that's the question. So, what if you stun like 3 heavy tanks at a corner? Does it all count? Hopefully it does, but... I mean, if individual each shot is only counted once, like if you hit like a group of vehicle, all of them are stunned, but it only counts as one, then I believe you should play a low tier Rapid firey artillery like the FE-304 or what's another good one? The Burt? That's that's the Burt. Or the Bishop or the Birch gun. But some of these missions require you to play tier 6 or higher. So you should land your shots a little bit more often and has a faster reload. But I don't believe the 10 to 15% in reduction of the reload time will help a lot to the rapid firing of the guns. Doesn't do that much. I mean, the GW E100 fires about the same reload as the original one in 9.17.1. So I believe everything is added together, accumulative. So it won't be wasted. If you hit a lot of people, you do a lot more stunning. So eh, okay. Mission number four is stun an enemy heavy tank or tank destroyers at least X number of seconds, so it's like the previous mission, but seconds now. So just stun a lot of people together, I guess. Eh. Stunning should also cause damage. Okay. Originally, it was destroy modules. That was fun. Low gold, high explosive rounds, and <laughs> just go for it, I guess. But usually, you should be aiming at Waffen Traders or Romantil Borsigs or light tanks. <laughs> quote unquote, because they have no art, no artillery. They have no armor for artillery. So, yeah, this mission. I mean, it's more consistent. It's a lot easier than trying to shoot a low armor target because if a low armor target is spotted onto your mini map, that means he is spotted for your teammates, which also means your teammates will shoot at that target, which also means he has no armor and he will die pretty fast. So, it will be a long time before you readjust your aim to kill that target. So, I believe this mission is a little bit more consistent. It's a little bit more easy to follow through, hopefully. If you have a good position shooting at a heavy tank corner, it should be fine. On to mission number 5. Enable your allies to cause damage to vehicles stunned or immobilized. Now, remember, detracking is based off module damage so all shells have lower module damage and therefore harder to detract but you hit a wider area surface area from your shell so you should rely on stunning them and basically what this mission means is close range fire support shoot at enemy heavy tanks or tank destroyers close to your allies so like a heavy tank corner on westfield shoot at westfields a hill at the top and hopefully your teammates will follow up and deal more damage to those slowed or immobilized vehicles originally it was cause damage exceeding the number of your health the x number of your health so basically getting a gorse medal at the end for the object 260 and that's doable for high tier or actually very high tier artillery like the GW Tiger or the Tiger P or the E100, but uh, is it easier to do these missions with a low tier artillery like AMX 13F3 or uh, the M44? I, it's debatable, but high tier artillery has more splash and therefore hits more targets and therefore gathers up more stunning if that's a term I guess so 
I still think high tier artillery is somewhat required for you to complete these missions, but it's the same for other vehicle classes like tank destroyers. You have to deal 8,000 damage. You cannot squeeze 8,000 damage out of a Hellcat. You don't have that many shells. So yeah, it still requires you to have a large high tier vehicle, high tier artillery to complete these missions, but cause 3,000 damage by stunning or have your allies cause 3,000 damage. It's like the current platoon missions. So it's easier because you're stunning them. So, I mean, if they're stunned by 1%, so basically they're not stunned, it still counts. So I think that's relatively easier. On to mission number six, enable your allies to damage at least X number of vehicles by stunning. So it's like a repeat, but this time it's based on number rather than seconds or damage. So, eh. Originally, it was destroy two enemy vehicles or destroy X number of vehicles higher tier than your vehicle. So basically, UXVM snipe or tank list snipe people. So not that much different, but if you are going for the stunning or immobilization of multiple enemy vehicles, it's probably closer to the ones spotted by your teammates basically heavy tank corner so mm. sbg number seven mission number seven stun at least x number of enemy vehicles now what's interesting about this mission is is that it gives a small number so stun at least two enemy vehicles three enemy vehicles five and six you can actually complete the Object 260's mission with one shell if you are lucky enough to find a clusterfuck of six people. And that's the mission. All you have to do is win and survive. So basically, hopefully your team doesn't suck at that point. But yeah, it's a lot easier than destroy a total of three enemy tank destroyers and artillery, win the battle, and cause 4,000 damage. <sighs> That's dramatically different. That's like hitting a good shell, a lucky shell on six people, even if you stun them by 1%. That's it. Or you can deal 4,000 damage, kill three enemy tank destroyers and artillery, and win the battle. That's super different. <laughs> so you can judge all these missions like the T-28 pilot number one marathon thing. So which mission do you think would be a grind and which mission would be like a breeze? To skip through the day. Obviously, the new one is a breeze. So, mission number eight be the top X number of player on your team by experience earned. So, this is basically how well you do. And it's a little bit better, I guess, than dealing at least 3,000 damage to enemy heavy tanks, destroy at least two enemy heavy tanks, and win the battle. So, originally, the older mission are presets, like deal X number of damage, flat. So it's difficult for low tier artilleries to do that, like tier 4, tier 5, tier 6. Yeah, you don't have that big of a gun to hit and chunk people's health. Whereas current mission is how well you do. You don't have to deal that much damage, as long as you provide enough support. Like if you deal enough damage to a higher tier vehicle, you might get even more experience than shooting a low tier vehicle and therefore you should be on top of the XP list. So it's relatively easy, relatively. It's like the T-25's marathon mission. So eh, just with artillery. Mission number nine, destroy modules. So it's like previously, but they switched the mission list around based on difficulty, I guess, but originally it was score 4 hits on enemy vehicles, direct hits, remain unspotted, survive the battle, win the battle. Now it's the same for the secondary condition, but just destroy modules or crews to 10. So it's still like the previous mission, I believe. It's one of the which, but the module damage aspect has been reduced by 50% as you saw with the HE shell. So it's harder for you to destroy modules. 
you can damage modules, sure, but that means you have to constantly hit. So I think this mission might be a little bit more difficult because the reduce, uh, the reduction, the reduce in the module damage of different shells, but still you have to, you still have a big artillery. You still need to have a big artillery like the T-92 or the Conqueror gun carriage or the GW Tiger, GW E100. You still need a 170 millimeter plus gun shooting at targets to hopefully destroy their modules. But the easiest module I found to be destroyed is the tracks. So that's the outside most module. Or sometimes you could be lucky and hit the periscope and knock out the periscope. The turret ring is a little bit more difficult. Same goes for the gun, same goes for the fuel tanks or the ammo rack. Yeah, you're not going to hit the ammo rack. If you do, he's dead. So, yeah, highly doubt it. But the best module is the tracks and then the periscope. That's about it. Or the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks is pretty hard. Or the radio. Yeah, radio is easy. Some radios have no health. So, uh, small detail, but this is a little bit harder. Mission number 10 is... Total damage caused by you and your allies to enemy vehicles that have been stunned or immobilized by X number of HP. So, eh, you could have your teammates or platoon shooting at targets you shoot at. So, it's good. But the original mission is one of the most hated mission by me. So, originally, it's destroy at least two enemy artilleries and deal 4,000 damage. So... I hate this mission because I did not finish it. Also because it's 4,000 damage. So that's a large chunk of health. And if you play artillery with a large gun, you don't have to reload to go for artillery killing because by the time your teammates spot their artillery, their artillery are dead <laughs> before you got a chance to reload. So you try to kill steel across the map against a medium tank or a light tank, you're not gonna win. You're not gonna go for that kill steal. So this mission is pretty rough. But the previous to this 9.17.1 personal mission for SBG number 10 is destroy two enemy artilleries that have not been spotted. And that was a nightmare. <laughs> so basically you have to look for trajectory, the tracer for enemy artillery shell. You have to hit them twice and kill your opponents before your light tanks or your mediums or your heavies spot their artillery. Yeah, okay, this is a lot better. <laughs> so total damage caused by you and your allies to enemies that have been immobilized or stunned for 4,000 HP. Yeah, that's a godsend. Holy crap, that's easy compared to previous missions for this stupid mission. Ugh. Okay, mission number 11, stun at least X number of enemies with one shot. So this is basically destroy X number of enemies with one shot. So original mission for the object 260 was destroy two enemies with one shot. It was fun. It was difficult. But the current mission is stun at least three enemy vehicles with one shot twice. And if it clusterfucks like the T25 Marathon, like you saw with the meta, it's going to be easy, super easy. You could even like shoot five enemies with one shot based on the new splash radius. So yeah, it's a lot better. It's a lot better. Mission number 12, stun enemy vehicles for at least X number of seconds in total. Allies must destroy X number of enemies that has been stunned or immobilized. Uh, compare that to the finish the battle as the top damage dealt, destroy at least four enemy vehicles and survive the battle. 200 seconds. So still goes back to is the multi-targeted stun. Is that accumulative together, like add it all together or is it separate? But 200 seconds, that's a good chunk of time. <laughs> that's three minutes stun. So, I mean, you could stun them for 1%, and that's it. I mean, they're not stunned, they're just 1% stunned. So basically, reduce their crew skill by 1%. That's not much. The biggest could be like, what, 50% plus? But as long as you hit them, 
it counts. But 200 seconds, so... Uh, well, it should be a little bit easier. I did the original mission, the Striker, with my GW Panther. And I actually just one shot people, killing like 5 targets and deal the most damage. So that's doable, but based on the old accuracy to the new one, it's a lot better for you to just hit new uh, new vehicles with the stun and have your teammates shoot at them. But should be a little bit easier. Should be, quote unquote. Mission number 13 is cause damage to enemy vehicles at least X number of times. So basically stunning them as well. So eh, compared to the original, it's cause 30%. <laughs> So, cause 30% of the total damage to the enemy vehicles by your team. You can have your two mates help you with this mission. So, just have a bunch of medium tank friends or heavy tank friends or tank destroyer friends or light tank friends and let them do all the work. <laughs> so, platoon missions are actually easy. Just piggyback on your platoon mates. Simple enough. I mean, all you have to do is deal damage or stun them. 12, 12 times. What? You just have a freaking rapid firing light tank and let them do the work. That's super easy. Okay, mission number 14 is another Purdue mission. Stun enemy vehicles for at least X number of seconds. Have your teammates to shoot at the vehicle. So a little bit better with platoon mates. But originally, the Object 260's mission is cause at least 5,000 damage to enemy heavy tanks. And tank destroyers, platoon mates also count, but it's also workable. But this does require a high tier artillery, like tier 9 or tier 10, with a large caliber gun. So, uh, stun enemy for 250 seconds. So, that's a little bit more difficult than previous, like SPG 11, 12, but uh, 200. Uh, go, going back to the original detail I guess is is the stat for stun a cumulative altogether adding altogether if it's not you have to hit constantly so you have to shoot a rapid firing like 155 152 so basically a tier 7 artillery rather than a large caliber artillery so you have to have a rapid firing artillery to constantly stun people so basically perma freeze if you can but it's not suited to large caliber guns like 240, 233, the 9.2 inch on the Concord gun carriage does not work. It's not fast enough. So, yeah, I think it's doable, but it's surprising that some of these missions are more geared towards lower tier with rapid firing howitzers than higher tiers with larger guns. But I like that. I mean, mix it up. And finally, we have the War Gods. So finish the battle as top player with experience earned, being able damage dealt by stunning. So similar, sim similar to before, but it's based on stun rather based on damage. So it could be done. This mission, I believe, originally is pretty easy compared to the previous SPG 14, and it's doable by yourself. But now it's just stun and have your teammates do the damage. So we have to see how well does the stun effect gives you XP. I mean, if you stun like five people for like what, 10 seconds and they get shot, how much XP do you earn from that, you know, shot compared to one hit and killing a tier eight when you're playing tier 10. So uh, we don't know the XP amount from the stun, but if it's good, it's relatively easy because the new accuracy, the new splash radius, and the aim time allows you to stun for 1% and have your teammates shoot at that vehicle. It will still count if you actually hit them, hit the enemy target for like 50% of the stun. So, it's doable. So finally, yeah, these new personal missions does seem pretty easy compared to the previous SPG missions, especially the one with 
destroy two artilleries or the one with destroy two vehicles with one shell yeah, and it's a lot easier so a lot of these missions are not that difficult a lot of these missions are repetitive or duplicates like deal x number of damage to stun vehicles deal i don't know or shoot at x number of vehicles with stun or have your teammates do stuff with them stunned it's all revol uh, revolving around the stun and not that much else so originally you had shoot two artilleries shoot two tank destroyers or heavy tanks module damage and just basically different food chain and shooting different targets now it's just stun them and that's it <laughs> so i believe it's a little bit easier so there you go folks the new spg personal missions as well as the generalization of artillery change on the test server so i kind of miss artillery i miss the fact that you could do montages of one shotting them one shotting like enemies with your artillery across the map it's a montage it's a rng fest i mean i feel sorry for those who got like one shotted across the map when they're moving like 70 kilometers per hour zigzagging and somehow you by the miracle of the rng jesus lands a shell lands a 210 millimeter on them and they die instantly that's a montage <laughs> but yeah <sighs> Is this skill? It's like RNG. It's not skill. It's RNG based. Everything's RNG to this extreme, but it's funny for a highlight reel. It's not that great for the game. So I will miss it, but it's a welcome change. So that's how I have, that's all I have to say about that. But there you go, folks. The new stuff about Arturi on the test server. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Try it out yourself on the test server. And I'll see you guys next time. So enjoy this small clip. And I'll see you guys next time. I said that twice. <sighs> Do I look like a cop to you? <laughs> Christian Bale does this voice all the time. Peace. Oh, please don't let me die. No, don't give up. Oh,